Order shipments? Check. Virtual meeting? Check. Schedule heart checkup? Done. We've all adapted to a new way of living. Keep your health care on schedule with Johns Hopkins Medicine, where your health and safety are our highest priorities. We're ready to care for you through virtual and in-person visits across Maryland and the greater Washington region. Your health, our experts, safely caring for you. Schedule your care now. Learn more at hopkinsmedicine.org forward slash safe. Today on News 4 at 4, we're working for you. An inside look at the local COVID vaccine trial for kids. What children reported days after getting the shot and how it could impact the timeline of kids being vaccinated. Today at 4 p.m. on NBC4. Tonight, it's the Voice Live Rounds, and Nick Jonas wants his first win. Let's get this done. Who's got what it takes and whose dream ends here? Watch live and vote to save your faves. The Voice Live Rounds, tonight on NBC. I'm just going to go ahead and assume you're a true crime fan. If you're like me, you can't get enough stories of murder, cold cases, and serial killers. I'm Bobby Holmes, and I'm here to scratch your true crime itch with killer stories. I think it's important to learn the history of both the victim and their attacker to try to figure out the why behind the killing. What motivated them? Was it a cheating husband who wants his wife out of the picture to start a new life? A serial killer who can't control his urges? Or maybe an unsolved case with multiple theories and suspects to discuss? From America's first serial killer in the 1800s to modern-day cases and everything in between, join me every week for a new episode of True Crime Storytelling. Subscribe to Killer Stories, available on all podcast platforms. Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Joe. And this is Crime Divers. Hello everybody, welcome back. Hello. So, um, just before we start... Oh God, what? <laughs> I'm always like, what, what are you going to do? Because God knows what's going to come out of your mouth. I was just going to tell the listeners what we were think, what we were talking about when we were talking about August. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. obviously, <laughs> at the moment, it's like, um, when, will, when does this episode go out? May. May? The 4th. The start of May. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's the start of May, and August is still a little bit away, but we have been thinking about it because August is a very special month. Yes, it is. So, August is my birthday, Jill. And, and my birthday, Laura. <laughs> and it's also our podcast first day. Yeah, it'll be yeah. A, a year since we started. So I was thinking, what can we do for our first anniversary? And I have noticed that a lot of other podcasts, they do like question and answer episodes. You know, they get their listeners to ask them questions about themselves. And, and I thought... We're not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> no, you're not that interesting either. Fine. And... If anybody does want to know anything about us, they can ask any time. Oh, yeah. This you know cool. what I mean? So, I had the idea. I'm taking credit for it. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> you take credit. So, for, well, we thought we'd, it was kind of for a couple of things, isn't it? Like, for our Patreon listener, well, basically for anybody who wants to sign up to Patreon, uh-huh. we're going to give August free. Yeah. So, you get, um, so, basically, if you want to join our Patreon, you would have to join before... Um, the end of June, so it'd be like you would have July. So you would basically be a patron for for July, and yeah. then yeah, you would get August free. So you'd have to sign up by the thirtieth of June. Yeah, sign up, sign up to our patron, and you'll get a month free in August. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's the offer that we're having mm-hmm. for our birthday, and also we thought, well, not everybody's going to want to to sign up to the patron, so we want to include everybody. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do for our regular listeners? We are going to give a bonus episode. Maybe just one? Maybe a few. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, we've discussed this. I can't remember. Okay. I was giving Laura an opportunity <laughs> to get in there and be included. Oh. So that it wasn't me that was doing all the talking. But 
obviously Laura's still half asleep even though it's like 11 o'clock in the morning now. <laughs> I, I actually can't remember. <laughs> right, Sorry. okay. So for regular listeners, basically, we're just going to have... A mu- August is going to be a month of just episodes. You know, if we'll do maybe a couple of extra bonus episodes and... um, Or, you know, just whatever we can do. Whatever we can manage. We'll make it a celebration Yeah, month. it's going to be a celebration month. So we'll get some bonus episodes out. And as I said before, if you want to join our Patreon... Um, if you join before um, the 30th of June, you can get August for free. Um, and that is patreon.com slash crime divers. And there is a lot of episodes on there that you will not have heard, so... Do you think so? Okay, there's episodes on there that Laura hasn't heard. Okay, but, you know... There isn't a lot. There's only about... I think there's about 12 so far. By, mind you, there'll be more than that by the time it comes to, to sort of June, yeah. July, August. There'll be more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not just bonus episodes. You'll get ad free episodes. Um, shout out on the show. A shout out on the show, and just you know, you can chat to un- us on there. I'm dying love. What we would like to do is just like build up a little a, a community, you know, like and once we've got more members, we could do maybe giveaways, competitions, that kind of thing. Yeah, because we're getting more interaction now as well, which is good. So you know, we just want to get more interactions because we enjoy talking to people about our podcast and what they think and it's good yeah so that's that's our news for this week so I think we better yes the shut up yeah they're probably sick of you waffling on even though you're going to have to waffle on now I'm not going to waffle on I'm going to tell your kids <laughs> now well where in the world are we? we are in the USA and what is it called? the identity thief Oh, I like that film that was a good film yeah anyway so are you ready to dive in? well yeah <laughs> I think we better dive in Okay, so Richard Hoagland was just a typical family man. He met Linda Eisler in the 1980s after being divorced from his first wife. Richard and Linda got married and they moved to Indianapolis and they had two sons together, Matthew and Douglas. So they had a nice life together. They lived in quite, from what I saw, the house looked quite big and fancy Mm -hmm. and the um, they often had like quite exotic family holidays, so right. they must have had quite a bit of money. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. So on the 10th of February 1993, Linda's day started as normal. The kids went off to school. No, in fact, the kids didn't go off to school. What she dropped what the one of the kids off to school. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure why the other one was at home. I don't know if he wasn't well or something, but the other one was at home. Right. Um. So she and I think she dropped the youngest off at school, and then she went off to to work at um uh, she worked in an office right so later that day richard called linda at work and he told her that he, he wasn't well mm-hmm. so he told her that he was going to go to the emergency room right so linda said well if wait and, and i'll come with you because she was obviously worried yeah of course um but he said he didn't have time to wait but then you know i think he must have convinced her that you know it wasn't life-threatening or anything like yeah, that so yeah. you know she, she just went mm, right okay then she just decided to um, she just stayed at work right. so, and finished finished off her day. Right. Um, so she thought, yeah, she thought, I'll just I'll finish off work and then I'll, I'll see him at home mm-hmm. later on and hopefully hopefully he'll be okay. Mm-hmm. So she finished, finished work and then she picked up six-year-old Douglas after work and uh, they went home expecting to see Richard there, but he wasn't there. And she realised that he had left their nine-year-old son, Matthew, home alone all day oh right um, but as I said I don't know why he, I don't know if he was he must have been not feeling very well he was off school yeah, that day school something, yeah. and she was expecting him uh, Richard to, to be at home with yeah, him yeah yeah um, so Linda was really worried because that's out of character it's not something that he mm-hmm. would that he'd ever done before right so she decided to call the hospitals in the area but there was no trace of him being at any of them oh right so she had a look around the house to see if Richard had taken anything with him. Mm-hmm. His toothbrush was still there. He hadn't taken his passport. He hadn't even taken a coat with him. Right. And it was February and it was cold, so that was weird that he didn't have a jacket. Uh-huh. So Linda was totally confused. Like, what could have been so urgent that he's left without his jacket? And potentially lied about where he's going as well. Yeah, but like he's, but he's still like he's left. He's, it's like it's been urgent. He's left without a coat, but he still had time to phone her. Yeah. It just, like, she just, uh, she was like, right, okay, this just doesn't, doesn't add up. No, it doesn't make sense. So she called the police, but she didn't know what else to do. She was really worried that maybe he'd got in an accident on the way to the hospital. Mm. You know, maybe it was somewhere where yeah. nobody had, nobody could see him, so he hadn't got any help. Yeah. 
Um, so she sat, she just sat on the couch, kind of sort of waiting, waiting, and, and praying that he'd be home soon. Mm-hmm. You know, all, I'm sure like all sorts of scenarios were going through her mind. Oh, yeah. And Definitely. after an hour, Richard called her. Right. Okay. And he said, I can't live this life anymore. I feel like you would be better off without me. Okay. He didn't even give her a chance to reply and he, he hung up the phone. Right. Then a few hours later, he called again and said, I don't want to go to jail. I'm never coming back. And he hung up again before Linda got a chance to speak. Okay. Oh, that would really have oh, me. Oh, that would do my head um, So as, you know, earlier Linda had called the police, there, there was a set, there was, they still held a search for Richard. Mm-hmm. And eventually his car was found at the Indianapolis airport. Mm-hmm. So they checked the airport, but no one called Richard Hoagland and took a flight out of Indianapolis the day he went missing or... After that, there was no record of him being at the airport. Right. So Linda just couldn't believe that he'd, like, up and left. She thought that they had a good life together. She said he'd been a bit distant lately, but Mm. nothing major. Like, she just assumed, you know, just life getting a bit much, you know, just stress at work. Like, Mm -hmm. nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. But he hadn't even taken anything with him, not even a change of clothes. So, like, where the hell was he? Uh, where uh, Where was he going? Yeah. So... He actually called Linda again on the 14th of February and again on the 15th of February. Right. So both times he reversed the charges. Mm -hmm. Police actually tracked down where these calls came from, but that just made it more confusing. The first call was from Venezuela and the second one was from Aruba. Okay. Like, why was he in these places and where was he going and how did he get there? You know, he didn't have his passport. Yeah. Okay. And actually, just thinking about the rest of the case, I don't think that was ever explained how oh. that happened. Right. Anyway. Well, I'm going by the title. Obviously, <laughs> it's got something to do with his identity. Yeah, I know, but he wouldn't have had that ident- a new identity yet um. when if when he did that. So, uh, anyway, we'll just keep going. Yes, just keep going. I'm sure you'll explain. <laughs> I've started, so I'm going to have to finish there. Yes. <laughs> so after that, Linda didn't hear anything from Richard until May. Mm-hmm. He sent his son Matthew a birthday card for his 10th birthday and a few months later he sent Douglas a card for his 7th birthday. Right. I don't know if Matthew's card had anything in it but in Douglas's card there was $50 and Richard had wrote a note in it that said, Doug, have a super birthday, you are a super boy. I love you and miss seeing you. Let your mum help spend this money, you might want to put some away. Maybe so- sometime soon we will get to see each other. I bet I won't even know you. It's been so long. Mind your mother. Bye. And I'm thinking, what? I bet I won't even know you. It's been so long. This is me. Yeah, you I was last, just going to say. You up and left in February. Aye, so it's not that long. Anyway, March, eight, that's three months. Yeah. I, I think mean, you're going to know your son in three months. Well, exactly. Especially, when he, I mean, what was he, six, going on seven? So, yeah. I mean, you know. It's not, like, it's not like he's a baby that, that, that he's yeah. going to forget him that. That's just weird. Did they they ever like dad? Like, love daddy or daddy or... Yeah, but um, that, mind your mother, but then on the other side, it's said love dad. Um, But those are the last words that the family heard from him. Right. So even though both Richard and Linda had worked, Richard was the one who who brought, he brought in most of the money. Mm -hmm. So when he left, Linda had no idea how she was going to make ends meet with just her income. Mm -hmm. But then she found out that Richard had racked up a mountain of debt and just left Linda with it. Oh, God. How nice. Oh, I'd be raging. So he had maxed out 26 different credit cards. How the hell has he even without got... Without Linda knowing. I don't know how you even get 26 credit cards. I was just cards. going to say, how do credit card companies... I mean, there's not even 26 credit card companies, <laughs> but I mean, how do they actually let you get away with that? I have no idea. Do they not do credit checks? Well, you would think. Um... Yeah, so and Linda didn't know about any of them, so and she had no way to pay these, these credit cards back. Mm. And also, just before he left, he had took out a huge bank loan behind Linda's back, and he actually forged her signature on the document. Oh, wow. I don't know how much that was for. Uh-huh. I just... It was huge. Yeah, okay. So, Linda lost the house and the cars, as Richard had just left them with nothing, and she couldn't am- afford the mortgage and car payments, She sa- mm. and she said she was just broken. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine somebody doing that to That's you? That's horrific. It is. Um, I, as I say, I mean, I don't know how much debt he racked up, but it must have been a, a hell lot. of a lot. Yeah. Um, so Linda, she filed for divorce so that she wouldn't have to pay his mm. unpaid debts, yeah. which, good on Fair you, that, I would have done the same. Yeah. Uh, the judge granted the divorce and ordered that Richard would have to pay the debt and not Linda. Yeah. So yeah. Well, at least fair. that got the debt off. Ah, yeah. 
Um, but even after all that, Linda and their sons still believed that Richard would come back and they could put it all behind them. Uh, no. I mean... I could not. I mean, the I mean, sons, yeah. obviously, it's different with the sons. The, 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 they're the kids. But if my husband did that to me, there's no way could I put that all behind us. No, I don't I don't know how you could. No. Would, I would never forget. I would be, I would be resenting them totally, totally bitter towards them for the rest of my life because you made me lose my house, my yeah, cars. Yeah, of course. And I would never trust them with money. No. Like, no. Certainly. No, I mean, yes, obviously, the kids would still... You know, you would like them to have a relationship if he was going to be responsible enough and... Whatever, yeah, but. I mean, like for the for the kids, yeah, you can have a relationship with the kids, but mm. not with me. No, definitely not. No. <laughs> um, but he never came back, and he never contacted them again, and they were they were devastated, obviously. Mm-hmm. And as if this all of this wasn't enough, Linda then found out that even before he left, Richard was being investigated for being part of a theft case. All right. So with him up and leaving, this meant to police that he was an even bigger part of this theft than what they originally thought. So is that why he's panicked and he's left? Don't know. Mm. <laughs> and they, well, that's what they did think. That's why he left. Yeah. To get away from the investigation, and they actually thought that Linda was in on it, oh, right. and that she was going to take the boys and meet with him in another location where he was hiding out. Uh huh. Um. So police thought. They just thought there was no way that Linda didn't know anything about Richard's financial situation. They even said to her that they believed that Richard was involved in some sort of drug trafficking and that she knew about it and she was involved in hiding Richard. Mm -hmm. But Linda's financial problems, they became that bad that she had to file for bankruptcy and she ended up moving into her parents' house with the boys. Like, she had nothing to do yeah, with it. Like, not dangerous. how the police thought she had anything to do with that? No, I, I mean, I can know. understand if she suddenly swanned off or she was so <laughs> swanning about with money and stuff like that. Then, yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, not all that. She wouldn't put, surely she wouldn't put herself through all that for what? At the end of the day, for yeah. what? No, she, like, she, she, always, she didn't know anything about it. She was just left with all these problems. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so she moved into, into her parents' house. So obviously things were much better financially and she was relieved just to have a, a roof over her kid's head. Mm. But soon she started to feel like she was being watched. Right. She kept seeing the same people over and over following her. She would also see random cars parked outside her parents' house. Her mail looked like it had been opened and then resealed before she got to it. Right. She also noticed that things around the house seemed to be getting moved. Mm-hmm. Things were even moved inside drawers. All right. And Linda was terrified, especially when her dad found a recording device attached to, to the phone line. Oh, shit. And, like, she knew that she was part of a police investigation, you know, because they were, they were still, the police were still investigating. Uh-huh. Um, so she thought maybe this was part of what they did to investigate, like... Well, to see if they could trip her up, to see yeah, if she like was the, involved. Yeah, like, they, they, they wanted to see if she was still in contact with Richard, but uh-huh. then she's like... Nah, even the police aren't allowed to do that. Like, they can't just go to someone's house and, like, move things around and tap the phone lines. So then she then she thought that maybe Richard was involved with some dodgy people mm-hmm. and it was them, like, trying to find out where Richard was or maybe even trying to get revenge on him by scaring his family. Mm-hmm. Um, so Linda and her parents were scared. Yeah. So they even moved to a new house in a place called McCordsville, Indiana. All of Linda's bills were transferred into her parents' names, hoping they wouldn't be traced back to her. Right. The house they moved to was in a secluded area, and they even got the kids to use the bus stop next to a friend's house, oh, wow. just in case they were being watched, so that like they wouldn't, you know, yeah. know which house they were coming from. Um, what a shame! I mean, their parents have had to up and yeah. move as well because of all this. Yeah. I don't know. It's affected all of them. Uh-huh. For about six months, the family kept themselves to themselves and barely went out until things seemed to be okay again. And I'll just tell you now, I still don't know why or who that was. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, right. I, I thought I, you were... This is a bit of a, a, a weird case that, you know, the, it, you, you're still left with answers. Questions. Aye. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Unanswered questions. Yes. <laughs> you know what I meant. Yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> so eventually Linda managed to move on. She met another man and they got married. Oh, right, okay. So in 2003, um, which was 10 years after Richard disappeared, because... She, Richard had had no contact with anyone and there'd been no sightings of him. He was legally declared dead. Oh, really? Okay. Declared legally dead. Declared... Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, okay. He was declared dead. Yeah. I don't know if it's legally declared dead or declared legally dead. I would have said legally declared dead. Yeah, I think I did it the wrong way around. Anyway. 
You know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so a few times you've said that now. <laughs> well, you know. You know what I mean. You know. <laughs> so the boys grew up. Matthew got married and had kids of his own. Right. Unfortunately, things weren't so easy for Douglas. He got into drugs in high school. He had broken his hand and he ended up getting addicted to the pills that he was pres- prescribed and it sort of went from there. Right. Um, so he was he was in and out of jail for years because of his drug use. Mm-hmm. He actually said at one point he, he had low self-esteem and low self-worth after his dad left. So, you know, it just goes to show... Oh, it's totally affected him. To- what the effect, the effect that some, that can have on... You well, know. that's it. I mean, you might not realise it at the time, but, you know, it has had an effect and it's, you know, it can sometimes, you know, however they're going to turn out in life, you know, it could have been because of that life event, mm. you know, if it's, something's happened to them. So. so, yeah, I mean, the family got on with their lives, but it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, can you imagine knowing that, that you've been, that they've been abandoned by their dad oh, well, abandoned left in complete financial ruin I mean that's awful yeah I, I mean just and I, I mean I, I, I'm thinking like for what but I don't know if you're gonna I, I'm kind of wondering now whether I'm gonna find out for why for what um yeah it, the, the, <laughs> there is gonna be a reason but it's mm. gonna be I don't uh, I don't know oh, am, I, am I gonna be left unsatisfied well I was <laughs> I just thought that's not a reason yeah okay so yeah so the, the, they they just had to deal with it and you know, get yeah, on as best as they could, yeah. Uh-huh. In 2016, which was 23 years after Richard had left, uh-huh. Linda got a phone call from a police department in Pasco County, Florida. Uh-huh. The officer asked her if she knew someone called Richard Hoagland, and she said, yeah, he was my ex-husband. Uh-huh. And um, she was actually driving at the time, and she had to pull over because the police officer said, oh, we have him in custody. Oh, <laughs> Because <laughs> well, obviously, well, well, I suppose at this point they didn't know he was 100% dead, but I mean... He was, legally, yeah, he was, yeah, he was yeah. dead. Wow. But no, they had him in custody, so... Huh. Okay. And the reason that they had him in custody was... Dun, 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 identity fraud! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, when Richard left in 1993, uh-huh. as I said, like I, I don't understand where the Aruba and Venezuela phone calls came from. Right, okay. Because he actually, he went to Florida. Okay. Um, and he rented a room with an from an older man called Edward Samansky. Mm-hmm. Um, Edward's thirty three year old son Terry had been a fisherman, and he had died two years before in a boating accident. Okay. So Edward and Richard grew close, and Edward would talk a lot about his son Terry, mm-hmm. and he basically told Richard everything about him. So instead of being a good friend and a shoulder to cry on, Richard found and stole Terry's death certificate. Right. So. I don't know how this works, uh-huh. but by having the death certificate, he can get, now get a birth certificate. All right. I'm assuming. I'm assuming you can do that because, I mean, I know you can request a birth certificate. We had to get one for one of the kids because we'd lost it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm assu- assuming because they had the they had the death well, certificate. That was like sort of the proof. That, that was the proof they needed to get a birth certificate right. for whatever. But then why would you want a birth certificate? Like if some if that person if you're 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 saying that they. Can I get a birth certificate? Here's his death certificate to prove it. Like, what what use have you got for the birth certificate? Because, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like, it seems a bit. Maybe to to um. Maybe you want the birth certificate to prove something to like because yeah. like oh well you know I've got this kid and I want to prove that I'm their dad. I, I, I don't suppose, know. Yeah, I mean I suppose, but just yeah. I'm sure there is reasons. I, I just can't imagine it being something that you would ask for too often. But then maybe um. I, I don't know. know. I mean, like maybe maybe it's just a right that you're allowed to have your family's birth birth certificate. Yeah. Unless you do like a family tree or something, maybe. Yeah. Or, you, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you might. You're obviously you can do that. Yeah. And they well, did. Feel, yeah. Okay. So he got now that he had a birth certificate. Birth certificate. Mm-hmm. He could get other documents that he needed to create a new identity for himself. You know, he could get his driver's license and right. whatever other. Things he did because he had a birth certificate. I'm surprised. Well, maybe again because I, I don't actually know, but you'd think that if obviously there's been a death certificate issued, you wonder whether like if you were to request say a driving license or whatever that that would flag up. Like you know, there's not some way that that could flag up and go, oh, this person's been registered as dead. You know, to to prevent identity yeah. theft. Yeah. You know, it, should, it shouldn't be so easy for him to go and done that. I mean, if, did you not mean that if there was a death certificate then? Is that what I said? You said? I think you said a birth certificate, don't you? I don't know if I said death certificate. Oh, don't, I don't know. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If, 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 <laughs> I if, get what you mean, yeah. You know, so it's registered into, like, public, you think it would public come record, up. isn't yeah. it? So, so you think, think it'd come up saying this person's dead? Yeah, exactly. So when you when somebody requests documents to be issued, you think checks like that would be automatically done because there is people that 
try to steal people's identity. And I have heard of people using, you know, something that's died their identity before as well. Yeah, I mean, like, you could maybe understand, like, way back when, but, I mean, this was 1995. Mm-hmm. So surely in the 90s, it would be computerised. There's no public record that it's been entered into somewhere. Well, that's know. what I'm saying. I'm talking about computer, yeah, computerised. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe before computers, it would be a lot easier to do, wouldn't it? Because, yeah. like, you, it's not into a system, but surely mm-hmm. in the 90s, it's all computerised by then. Because yeah, that's almost saying that, you know, anybody that's died... You know, if you can get hold of a document, then anybody could go and start getting documents in, in somebody else's name that's already died. I mean, yeah, there's obviously. Um, I mean, I'd love. I mean, maybe I need, need to Google it or something, but maybe. I don't know if there's a prefix. Google it. You never Google anything. I don't know. It's, it's me that Googles everything. Well, I did Google one thing and I forgot what it was now. Because remember you told me to Google it and I did <laughs> yeah. Google it and I forgot what I it was. I asked you to Google something about sentences. Um, yeah, prison sentences. I, did, I did actually Google it, but I could not for life you tell me what it was Never mind. Anyway, so yeah, so he created a new identity with having this birth certificate. He managed to get other documents. Aye, aye, okay. Mm-hmm. So in 1995, Richard, as Terry, because uh-huh. he's obviously Terry now, uh-huh. got married to a woman called Mary Hickman. Uh-huh. And they bought a house together in Zephyr Hills, Pasco County. Right. So Richard did a few different jobs and then he bought some properties and rented them out and even he even got a pilot's license. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Him and Mary had a son together. And, and Mary, Mary did say that she would ask him about the rest of his family, you know, like parents and brothers, yeah. sisters, whatever. Uh-huh. But he would always come up, like, with some reasonable explanation as to why she had never met them. Right. So they were happy, just living a normal life, and he was probably thinking that he'd got away with it. Which, to be fair, at this point, it probably does sound like he has, because how many years was it? Like, 23 years later? 23 years, yeah. However... One day in 2013, mm-hmm. the nephew of the real Terry right. was having a look at Ancestry.com. Uh-huh. And he found a living man called Terry Samansky living in Central Florida. And he found the pilot's license uh-huh. under the same name. Yeah. But of course, this nephew knew that the real Terry had died in 1991. Uh-huh. But for whatever, the family were actually, like, they were a bit scared to come forward straight away as they had no idea who this imposter was, mm-hmm. and they were a bit afraid that he would, like, come after them and hurt them. Mm-hmm. So they left it. Right. For, in 2013, they left it. Right, OK. Until 2016, so this is, like, three years later. Uh-huh. For whatever reason, the, the nephew decided to go to the police. Right. So the police found fake Terry's address mm-hmm. and went knocking on the door. Uh-huh. So, fake Terry, obviously, Richard. Uh-huh. So, Richard told the officers that he was Terry Samansky and he showed his driver's licence. Um, but once the police showed him the death certificate, because they'd, they'd got the death uh-huh. certificate and took it with them, yeah. got a copy of it, he admitted that he was Richard Hoagland. Right, okay. And his wife and son were at home at the time. Like, oh imagine. I know, because you just now ruined their lives because they've been know. living a lie. Imagine that, this policeman's at the door, and you're like, oh my god, what's happened? Like, there's yeah. a policeman at the door, and it's like, they're actually... You're not who you say you are. Like, I've married a man that doesn't exist, that is dead, yeah. basically. You know, you're not you're not who I thought you were. Oh god, that would, that would be horrible as well, because, I mean, she, throw, you know, she was obviously in love with him, yeah. married him, had a child with him. I don't imagine how his son felt. Oh god, I know. Like, his dad was, like, not, like, fake. Yeah, I mean, oh, no. That's... So... 63-year-old Richard Hoagland was arrested mm-hmm. in July 2016, which is 23 years after he disappeared. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're going to give me this reason. <laughs> when asked by police why he's le- why he left, uh-huh. his answer was... Oh, God, I'm going to be so pissed off on her. To get away from Linda. What? <laughs> that was it? <laughs> why not just buy a divorce her then exactly. why did you need to go create a whole new idea was she like possessive or something did you think he was gonna <laughs> don't know they had expected him to have been mixed up with bad people or for owing large amounts of money to people etc but no there was no evidence to suggest any of that so like whatever theft that they thought that he had been involved in he mustn't have been right Um, he wasn't mixed up with any sort of bad people or anything so I don't know what, what I don't know where this thing you know when she was with her parents i don't know who was in her house or watching her Uh because she thought it was maybe these bad people yeah no he just um wanted to get away from his wife i'm like right okay you want to get away from your wife but what about your kids well i yeah i mean like what about your children that have believed that their their dads abandoned them which he did obviously well he did yeah but like for what reason Mm -hmm. you know i mean They've obviously grown up thinking that their dad abandoned them maybe for, like, debts or whatever. So at least 
that was a reason. I mean, it was still shitty, but it was a reason. But just to, see, to get away from my mum. And then, I mean, That's the, way, the way you, I know you don't know exactly what goes on with people's relationships, but the way you described it is that the, the relationship doesn't sound that bad. No, well, she, as far as she was concerned, yeah. she they were happy. Like, they, they just had a normal marriage, you know, they, yeah. you know, had their arguments and whatever, like, normal people do, but there was nothing bad about their marriage. It was Why a good marriage. Why would you go to that extreme, though? I mean, like I say, if you're unhappy, then... <laughs> it's, it just... And, like, it was and that it. means you're not going to get to see your kids. If you just yeah. split up with somebody... You still get to see your kids. But do you think it may be in part to do with the fact that he racked up all the debt and stuff and they thought maybe it was an easy way out if he just didn't have to... But what about your kids? Well, obviously, he cared a bit more about money than the kids did, Yeah, see, they? that's just awful. Yeah, that's, so, that is pretty bad. Douglas, the, the youngest, you know, his youngest child, he uh-huh. was actually in jail serving an eight-year jail sentence when he saw headlines that a man had been found 23 years after disappearing and he recognised his dad from the pictures in the paper, like, mm. straight can you imagine... Seen that in the paper. I know. Wow. Like, oh my god. So now you're probably gonna get annoyed. Oh, even more annoyed than I am now. Yeah, because like you know, the, we've got to come to the jail bit now, haven't we? The, jail, oh. the sentence and then. Right. Okay. So originally, Richard went to jail and he was being held on a twenty-five thousand dollar bond. Mm-hmm. They wanted to charge him for his massive amount of debts that he didn't pay. Mm-hmm. The co- and the cost of divorce proceedings and some other charges from before he disappeared. Uh-huh. However, they weren't able to charge him with any of that because of the statute of limitations. Do you know what that means? Oh, oh, yeah, because that's in my case. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I recognise it. I've just done that in, the, in my case, yeah. Yeah, so basically that you only get a certain amount of time yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to charge. So obviously that, uh-huh. that amount of time had already passed. So they could only charge him with identity theft. Mm-hmm. And he was only sentenced to two years. Oh, you are having a laugh. And he's now a free man. <sighs> like, what a shame that... Identity theft? Surely that's worth more than two years. Well, I mean, I know it's not obviously as worse as, like, murder and, you know, all that and rape and all that sort of stuff, but, I mean... I still think you should get more than two well, years. He's, right? he's ruined his first family's life, you know. And, and racked up, caused her a whole load of pain with, like, money, like, lost, losing the houses, cars, etc. Caused her and her parents Fucked to Fucked up move. his kids. Yeah. Well, obviously had a, yeah, had that. Then goes, like, poor, an innocent family whose mm-hmm. son had died, steals his identity, and then obviously would cause him a bit of pain once they realised that that had happened. And then his new wife and, and kid, son. they've just totally found out they've been living a complete lie. And he gets two years for two that. Years. I bet she wouldn't have served the two. Did he serve? Well, I don't know. I just said he was sentenced to two years and is now a free man. So I don't know if he... He probably didn't even serve two years. So Linda did take him to court, though. Mm-hmm. And she sued him for $1.8 million in unpaid child support. And she won the case. But see, right? See, I get that. But where does that money then come from? I don't know. Because I'm always interested in that, right? Fine, sue that. Great. Who pays that money? Because it's not going to be him. Because he's not going to have $1.8 million, is he? I have no idea. I can't answer that for you. Yeah, I think he deserved a few more years than that. At least five or something. I mean, I mean, I know it's, 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 it still seems a lot, a little, but I understand it's not like as serious as killing somebody. So you're not going to carry. It didn't get punished, really, did yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, you're not, you know, you know, it doesn't. That doesn't. You know, you can't kind of expect to carry like a life sentence for that. I get that, but I mean, I feel like you know what a shame for the poor people that he's, you know, he's hurt along the way and. And two years is that that's all he gets for the, the amount of pain that he's caused. They've had twenty three years, that first family have had twenty three years of pain. Mm-hmm. And he suffers for two. Wow wow while he's been blissfully living you know And he's not um, even had to pay all his like his debts. Well why, yeah. Because of the statute of limitations. So there you go. He's a dick. Yes. <laughs> uh, see, not all crimes are about murder. No, no. I mean, I, I mean, it's not very often we've had, we've had a few other ones that haven't been murder, but generally speaking, we're uh, we're uh, we're mostly. Mo- yeah, most of them are murder. But yeah, like I, yeah. I, I need to. I like to give us a break now and again that yeah. doesn't always have to be murder. And I think like my next case, or no, I've got I've got another case that we're doing today that isn't murder either. Oh. 
There you go. So check me out. Check you out, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Uh, yes, thank you very much for listening. Yeah, and if you'd like to follow us on social media, um, we're on Instagram and Twitter. Which is crime underscore divers underscore pod. We've got a Facebook page. Crime. I actually think it's a group. Yeah, it's a Facebook group. I know, I keep calling it a page, but I actually looked at it today and I was like, that says Facebook group. Yeah, it's not really a page, it's a group. So it's Crime Divers Podcast. <laughs> Um, come join us there you can email us at crime underscore divers underscore pod at outlook.com we have a youtube crime divers podcast we have tiktok crime divers podcast <laughs> <laughs> and did you say patreon yeah well i said pa- patreon air lord so patreon.com oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um slash crime divers yeah. and and also if you do like us do not forget to subscribe rate, rate review. review bye, bye. Geico presents Motorcycle Word of the Day. Today's word is gremlin. Is a gremlin an unknown and persistent mechanical issue? Or is it something large that gets caught in your teeth when you ride with your mouth open? As in... Man, I gotta stop singing 80s power ballads when I ride. Ugh, keep getting gremlins in my teeth. She? Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Today on News 4 at 4, we're working for you. An inside look at the local COVID vaccine trial for kids. What children reported days after getting the shot and how it could impact the timeline of kids being vaccinated. Today at 4 p.m. on NBC4. Tonight, it's the Voice Live Rounds and Nick Jonas wants his first win. Let's get this done. Who's got what it takes and whose dream ends here? Watch live and vote to save your faves. The Voice Live Rounds, tonight on NBC.